So let me start by giving you an overview uh, of Honeycomb. And uh, first, what you'll see is that we've revamped how you navigate uh, in a device with a larger screen like this. So if you look at the bottom left of the screen, you see that there's a back button, there's a home button, and there's also a new button that's dedicated to multitasking. So when I tap that, you'll see visual previews for uh, some of the applications that I was using recently and, it's, and the state that they're in, so it's actually really easy to switch back and forth. Over here on the bottom right, you'll see the notifications and system status area, which I'll talk about uh, in just a little bit. And the rest of the screen is dedicated entirely to applications. And the home screen is actually a really important part of our developer's story. It's not just a warehouse full of apps. It's an application development platform in itself. And I'll talk a little bit about that. For example, widgets, as we call them, and by the way, the widget system is the same that's been hugely popular in Android phones, can now be backed by collections of data. And these collections of data can be visualized in some interesting ways. So right here, you're seeing my Gmail inbox that I can scroll through. You also see my calendar. I can even scroll through them together, and it's just really easy with multi-touch support. If I move over here to this home screen, I have a grid widget for, for my bookmarks. And if I scroll once again, I have what we call a stack widget that allows me to flick through different things, for example, Major League Baseball uh, highlights or my books over here or some YouTube videos that are popular today. And I can even sort of do this together and actually have a lot of fun with it. So there you go. So these widgets are sort of pre reusable um, pre-built components that developers can use to bubble up important information to the home screen. From a user's perspective, what really matters is, despite all of the clever computer science that we have to enable the smooth experience that you just saw, it's really just about quick and easy access to important information. Now, another thing that we've redesigned uh, on Android, um, on, on Honeycomb, is the notification system. And as you'll see, notifications are completely non-intrusive. They don't get in your way, just like on phones but now they contain more information. So in this particular case, my friend Anand uh, is INing me and you can see his picture in the notification. And you can ignore it or you can uh, uh, action it if you want. Um, what, we've, what we've done is we've built, maybe I should tell him to stop. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've built some templates that actually allow developers to create these richer, more advanced kind of notifications. And I'll show you a few of those. Uh, Probably my favorite example is what I'm gonna show you now. Um, there's a headphone notification at the bottom here. Uh, I, hap I was listening to some music before getting on stage. And while the music app is active in the background, I get this notification that if I click on, will allow me to play, pause, or go to the next track, for example, like this. Yeah, international underground, thunder bounce when I stop the ground. Like a million elephants, a silverback, a orangutan, you can't stop. And I can just pause that. Now, if I tap on the notifications area anywhere here on the bottom right, um, I'll be able to dismiss um, some of these um, notifications if I don't need them anymore. We call this a line item veto. And while I'm in the neighborhood, let me talk about the quick settings panel right here. This gives me quick access to important things uh, like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. Just right there in one place. So. Now I wanna show you some of the new application patterns that we've created as part of the Honeycomb UI framework. But before I do that, let me just point out the fact that we've spent a significant amount of effort making sure that existing Android applications run really well on tablets. In fact, an app that's been designed with our recommended development guidelines is going to work without any modifications and run really well on Android. And I wanna show you an example, in fact, one of my all-time favorite games, which is, of course, Fruit Ninja. So because I was playing this earlier, I'm gonna see that it's actually showing up here in my recents by uh, touching the multitasking button. So I'm gonna go into Fruit Ninja, and I'll play this for a little bit. Now, this is a completely unmodified version of Fruit Ninja. In fact, what's available in Android market today, um, before, and it was built before Honeycomb even existed. Uh, and it works amazingly well, it even supports multi-fingered, multi-handed uh, gestures if you want. You can probably also tell that I am really good or getting really good with this. 
Uh, but I'll pause that for a second. Um, so it works really well even though it was built before Honeycomb even existed, as I said. Now, of course, we want to encourage application developers to build tablet-optimized experiences for the applications. And to do that, we've added a lot of really cool new things to the Honeycomb application framework. One of these things is what we call an application fragment. And I want to show you what that is uh, inside of Gmail. So let me open Gmail over here. Uh, so we, we're in landscape mode. And in landscape mode, you're going to see two panes, the left folder view uh, and then my inbox on the right. Now, watch what happens when I uh, click on a message, when I tap on a message. You see that the leftmost pane slid out to make room for another pane, the message, uh, that then slides into the same place. And if I click on the inbox, you see that the, the, side, the leftmost panel or pane slides back in. These panes are what we call application fragments. And a fragment is something that a developer can use to encapsulate specific application functionality and then reuse that throughout the application. So for example, if I flip this tablet into portrait mode, um, I may want and probably will want to recombine how these uh, fragments are laid out. And eventually, fragments are going to be useful so that you can have completely reusable functionality between the phone and the tablet version of your application. So that's coming uh, in the future. Uh, another really cool action uh, is being able to pick up and then drag uh, a message, for example, into a folder. And this is something that has been uh, built not as part of Gmail, but part of the application framework. Uh, we have an incredibly full-featured dragging manager uh, that uh, allows you to create uh, and manage uh, sort of these, these dragging interactions. There's a lot more coming there. And then one last thing that I wanted to show is across the top here is the application bar. The application bar is another application pattern that can be packaged into a fragment. And in this case, uh, it contains, it's showing global actions. So I, I have search, I have compose, uh, and a few other things. But if I select a few messages, you'll see that that application bar now changes to contain actions that are specific to the selected items. In this case, archive, star, uh, label, etc. Uh, so this is another example of sort of really modular development that uh, we've built as part of the Honeycomb application framework. So I'll go back to the home screen. And now I want to talk a little bit about performance. Needless to say, we've spent a tremendous amount of time really optimizing performance at every level on Honeycomb, especially for 2D and 3D graphics. So first, all of 2D drawing that developers have been doing with the existing uh, framework can now be hardware accelerated. And developers can actually do that literally by adding just one line of code to their existing application, and then they can, they, they can take advantage of hardware acceleration. We've also added a new animation framework to Honeycomb to enable developers to add transitions and overall polish uh, to their applications. And you've seen some of that stuff already uh, in the home screen. Uh, I want to show uh, in a really simple way how powerful this is. So I'm going to click on the top button here on the right. Uh, that's going to take me into the uh, home screen customization UI. And then I'm going to tap on the home button on the bottom left. And then I'll do that in rapid sequence. And you can see how amazingly powerful this new animation framework is. Just incredibly fluid and smooth. We're also introducing a brand new graphics engine called RenderScript. RenderScript uh, is built for high performance interactive 3D graphics. And it enables some amazing new things, some of which I believe you've already seen. Let me show you one of the best examples of this, which is YouTube. So I'm going to go to YouTube here. And what you see is this insanely beautiful 3D video wall that I can use to browse videos on YouTube. And you can see how fluid and awesome it is to play with. This is built using RenderScript. I'll go into our Books app. And in the Books app, you'll see a 3D carousel of the books that I've purchased, uh, also built with RenderScript. And if I go into a book here, I've chosen uh, Unbroken, watch how incredibly smooth the turning, the page flipping animation is, even when you have pictures. It's just really beautiful. This is all built using RenderScript technology as well. Um, just for fun, I want to show you just a few more examples of 3D applications that we can build or that can be built uh, on Honeycomb. Uh, we've spent as much time as we could 
optimizing performance at every level, even doing things like supporting multi, uh, multi-processor cores or multi-core processors uh, at the kernel level to make sure that everything works super smoothly. So let me take MAPS as an example. So I'll go into MAPS here. And with the Z version of MAPS, as some of you may know, uh, we we're adding uh, dynamic rendering technology with three-dimensional vector graphics. And what that allows is for me to do manipulations of all sorts on a map. So I can zoom, I can do some rotations, for example. I can tilt the map. Uh, and if I, can if I go close, I can even start to see some buildings. Um, look how beautiful it is to look at the Embarcadero. Just incredibly cool. Um, I will also show our music application, uh, which is over here. And I'll go to, uh, I'll go over here. So look at this incredibly smooth um, sort of carousel that allows me to browse through my albums, um, also built uh, using the, the 3D constructs that are part of the application framework. And one last and really fun example is Google Body, which is a new application that I've heard some call the Google Maps of human anatomy. Uh, and I can do here the you know, things that you would expect from, uh, from maps like pan and zoom. I can also turn on layers. Uh, but in these cases, there are layers like muscles or uh, maybe the circulatory system or the skeleton. Uh, and I can zoom in here. Uh, and perhaps this is useful maybe to tell my doctor on the phone that I've broken my clavicle. Uh, or if my doctor tells me that uh, maybe I've pulled my infraspinatus, I can actually find out what that is. Doesn't look that serious. So speaking of 3D, 3D graphics, um, I wanted to invite an expert over to the stage. So please welcome um, Thomas Williamson from War Drum Studios to show some of the ama amazing things that you can build using 3D graphics on Honeycomb. Thomas, come on up. Thank you, Hugo. My name is Thomas Williamson. I'm the CEO of War Drum Studios. We're a game developer based out of Gainesville, Florida, and we're recently uh, we've moved completely over to mobile development and next generation game development on Android. So we have a few games I want to show you. The first game is Monster Madness. That's on the first tablet here. Okay, so Monster Madness is a Southbeat Games title that was a PS3 game. And we've brought it over to Android using the same assets, the same gameplay logic, the same animation. And you kind of get a, a cinematic feel. <laughs> So the game itself, it's a, it's a hack and slash shooter. Uh, you have up to two people, so you can have Wi-Fi co-op with two different tablets, uh, fighting enemies coming from all around you, hundreds of particles, you have explosions, uh, you have uh, destructible environments. Here, blow up, blow up the barrel, man. There it goes. <laughs> so you have a, a, a lot of performance in high definition contact with Monster Madness. And the, the game's gonna feature five huge environments, four difficulty levels, vehicular combat, the whole nine yards, we're trying to throw everything we can at the player, and the high performance of Android and what Honeycomb provides allows us to do that. So let's move on to the second tablet, and I can show you Great Battles Medieval. So Great Battles Medieval is a History Channel Presents Great Battles, and it is a cooperative development between Wardrum Studios and Slytherin Software. And so this title is basically an educational strategy game with massive battles, and it's the first title that we've done that has 100% usage of two cores on tablet and, or, or you know, we're, we're looking for it in the phones as well. The game itself shows hundreds of units animating, moving, uniquely thinking, all in a massive battle, all on your phone, all on mobile. Here, let's try to get a... So it really pushes the tablets to the limit, and you can look forward to all of both of these titles within the next month. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thomas. That was, that was absolutely stunning. Um, finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about the new media capabilities of uh, the Honeycomb platform. Some live multitasking here. So um, I want to show you the new camera app that we've built because it has uh, a completely stunning uh, new UI. So as you can see here on the right, 
uh, we have a really slick new UI for to expose all of the controls that you want when you're taking a picture. So I can uh, you know, control the flash, white balance and exposure settings, color effects, et cetera. Um, I can also flip to uh, the front camera if I want. Um, I'll go back to the main camera and I'll just take a picture of you guys. Let's see, let's check over there. Um, so there you go, and I can of course also uh, shoot a video and upload it instantly to YouTube. We think this is a really cool new UI and uh, hopefully you'll love it. Uh, now Android has also been an amazing communications platform. And this device has a front facing camera, which is really great because Honeycomb supports video chat. So I wanna show you a little bit of video, video chat. And uh, uh, what you won't see here necessarily because the tablet is sort of fixed in a stable position is that we've actually spent a lot of time uh, building image stabilization technology uh, as part of video chat on Honeycomb, both to make the experience really smooth, but also to save bandwidth, recognizing that a lot of times users are gonna be on cellular networks uh, with, with a device like this. And it works really, really well. Uh, to show you video chat, uh, I'm going to uh, actually uh, contact my friend Lady Killer. Lady Killer is his uh, nickname. You probably already know who it is, uh, and you certainly will know as soon as we connect. So let's uh, let's see if we can uh, talk to Lady Killer here. Uh, looks like he might not be online. Let me uh, let me go into talk. Maybe we'll try uh, logging out. Oh, I'm not signed in. There we go. That would help. So what I'll do here from, uh, from my home screen is I'm gonna use a widget that's called a contact shortcut, which allows me with a single click um, to actually email or, or start a video chat with someone. Um, doesn't, my friend Lady Kila isn't showing as online yet. Um, so maybe we'll try that in a little bit. Uh, or perhaps I'll just chat with my friend uh, Anand here. Let me try that. Lady Killer, where are you? Hmm, still offline. Well, let's just talk to my friend Anand here on video chat. Hey Anand, how are you, man? Hey, what's up? Doing pretty sorry, well. Sorry, I'm not lady killer. I'm, I'm not bad with the ladies, though. <laughs> I'm sure you're not. Uh, hope you're having a good time, man. Uh, so uh, I, I'll see you a little bit later, okay? I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw uh, the, the new video chat technology as part of Honeycomb, and maybe Lady Killer will show up in a little while. <laughs> cool. See you All later, right. man. Thanks, man.